Hello everyone, welcome back to this BioFlow short tutorials where we show informally uh, how to use certain modules um, for performing your analysis. In the past, I already showed you how to retrieve your data from phenotypes, genotypes, pedigree, weather, and QTL information. Um, also how to save the data when you have to leave early and come back later and retrieving that data again, including some of the analysis that you might have performed before. And I also uh, have shown you in the past the QA for phenotypes and markers. If you have not seen those videos, uh, please look at the description so you can uh, uh, see the others. For this particular video, I'm gonna focus on the single trial analysis. Um, for that, I'm going to start retrieving an old analysis that I saved, uh, which includes the QA for markers and phenotypes and loading that object. You can see that I get a success message, and then I can move to single trial analysis. You will notice that the status says data is complete and I can proceed to perform um, the analysis. If I didn't have any data, this message will be in red telling me what are the steps that I need to follow. Uh, you might remember that every analytical module has three tabs at the top, an information tab that is telling me the details of uh, you know, about this module and, and what are the methods behind some references, the software used behind the scenes and some of the dependencies between the different modules. Um, to be able to do the SDA, I just have to have the data. I just have to QA the data under quality insurance module, and then I can move to do the SDA. If I go to the input tab, now you will see that uh, I have some tabs to specify my input parameters. The very first one is, and you remember that always the gray boxes indicate um, the area where we specify the input parameters. And below, we only have some visualizations that help us to select the right input parameter. In this case, it's asking me for what um, QA stamp or QA analysis I should use for the SDA. And I only have one, so I'm going to pick this one, which is the one that is showing me the network plot. Then I can move to the next tab to pick the traits that I want to analyze. Again, in the gray boxes, you can see that there is uh, some parameters that I need to define. The required, I need to provide the traits to analyze. And optional, I can select another trait to be used as covariables or covariates. Um, some alternative or optional input parameters, you can see that is hidden here, like different response distributions. I can actually specify if the different traits should be analyzed with a different distribution. By default, we use the Gaussian, but if you have different type of uh, response variables, you may want to use a different uh, response or, or distribution for the response. For now, I'm going to go by the default, which is Gaussian, because this is normally distributed data. And in order to uh, select the traits, um, BioFlow is allowing you to see at least some plots on you know, how your data looks like for the different traits, in case you may want to skip one trait of being analyzed. Okay, I have picked the traits. So now I can move to the next tab and pick in the effects to be fitted. In this case, depending on whether you have a line program or a hybrid program or a um, OPV type of uh, program, so you may want to decide what is the genetic evaluation unit. By this, we mean, are we going to fit the individual itself, like per se uh, performance evaluation, or this is more like a GCA um, type of analysis where this progeny testing and you have hybrids and maybe you want to fit or estimate the um, the merit for mothers and fathers. You can select uh, the one that suits uh, your particular case. You will notice that the visualizations below is letting you know that for your data set, you have 784 different materials uh, for designation. If I look at from the perspective of years, I only have one year of data um, for this particular data set. Um, and then you can see that mothers, I don't have any mother currently specified. And that means that I cannot really select uh, mother and father. If I select them, it's okay. It's not gonna break, but 
it will not fit anything for mother and fathers because I do not have information for mother and fathers. And also let me see um, another um, table for the experimental design for the different environments. That way I can see that for the different environments that I have in my data set, I have two reps and I have different number of blocks because these are experiments that have different sizes. For now, I'm just gonna fit the merit for the hybrids that I have under the column designation when I did the match. And then I'm good to go. Then you can go and click on run analysis. There is some additional run settings that you can always uh, change if you want, but uh, they have some good default values like the number of iterations, printing logs, or the estimate type. Since we are using the two-stage approach, uh, for the single trial analysis, we normally estimate blues, and then this will be used in the multi-trial analysis together with the standard errors to fit blobs, G blobs, P blobs, or any sort of um, random effect um, for, the, for the merit of the individuals. But for the first stage, which is the single trial analysis, we normally stick to blues because this will not be used for selection. It will only be used to pass to the next step. Um, something important to consider is that um, you might have noticed that we did not allow the, the user to tell us what is the experimental design that they have or what are the factors that they should fit. And that is because BioFlow is uh, following an experimental design agnostic approach um, where we actually will fit everything that you have available. What it means is that if in your environment you have rep information, we will feed the rep information. If you have incomplete block information, we will feed incomplete block. If you have row information, we will feed row. If you have column information, we will feed column. If you have row and column information, we will feed a spatial kernel between row and column, uh, in this case, the two-dimensional spline. And that means that you don't have to worry about the design. For example, in this particular environment that there is only one incomplete block, incomplete block will not be fitted. It will only be fitted the rep information or big block. Um, I hope that uh, is, is clear enough. Otherwise, feel free to drop us a, a message. Um, and then you can just go to the Run Analysis tab and click on the button Run SDA. That will start processing your job fitting for each trade, for each trial, uh, the best possible design. And then it will extract predictions. Now you can see that we have predicted values, the standard errors for the different environments, the different materials for the different trades. Um, we also have some associated metrics like plot heritabilities, coefficient of variation, reliabilities, genetic variance, residual variance, means for each environment, for each trade. We also keep track of the uh, models that were fitted. Uh, you can see that it can be different depending on the, on the different trade and different environment. You can see that different environments and different trades might have a different formula because for some environments, maybe rep and incomplete block was meaningful, so it was fitted. But some, for some others, maybe only incomplete block had a parents component greater than zero, so only that one is fitted. Um, like the rest of the modules, you also have a dashboard that allows you to visualize the results, like, you know, for which environments uh, we had certain traits, uh, how many entries we have per environment in, in this particular um, data set. Also some summary statistics, for example, for yield, you can see for the different environments, the value of the heritabilities, the value of the reliabilities, the coefficient of variation, and you can, can quickly identify some environments that did not have enough genetic signal and should be um, probably excluded from procedural analysis. You can also see, you know, proportions of, uh, of variance. For example, for yield, you can see that um, in this particular environment, 2021 NYH3, uh, 39 was or 39% of the genetic, uh, sorry, the total variance was genetic uh, and 60%, close to 61% was residual. And then you can see the same for the different environments. Um, this is in terms of proportion, but you can also see it in terms of um, actual value or magnitude. You can always select a different trait and have a different perspective. You can also look at the parameters in different ways. In a bar plot, for example, we can look at the reliabilities for the different environments and colored by trades. 
you can also get the predictions table in white format for the different trades and for the specific environments. As I mentioned before, we don't expect that you use this for selection decisions until you wait for the multi-trial analysis to be done. But this um, report uh, and this analysis for STA can give you an idea of how the data looks like, the quality, et cetera. You can see also you know, the distribution of the predicted values after the analysis for the different environments. Um, and, and you know we are using the Plotly library so you can create some dynamic visualizations. You can also look at the correlation between the different environments uh, for the different trades. You can just go to the drop-down menu and select a different trade and see what was the, the correlation between those uh, estimates. As long as there is good connectivity, those estimates would make sense. And some information on the references uh, or the methods used for this module. Uh, same that with other modules, you can always just download this report or dashboard by clicking on the button for download dashboard and you will receive an html on your downloads that you can always show to people even when you are disconnected from the application and show exactly the same things that we were looking at before um in a, a very you know dynamic way with the plotly library and this can be extremely useful when you want to communicate in the advancement meetings um and as, as before, um, you can always uh, just uh, save your analysis and uh, you can see that you receive a new timestamp for that STA. And it's telling you that now you can proceed to the multi-trial analysis. But for now, I will uh, assume that you, know, you have to leave and you will have to save your data or your analysis. You can go to data management menu, click on save analysis. And then now I can call this one um, STA done and you can see that the this particular data set um, has been analyzed with QA row, QA Geno, and STA. And I just have to click on save and um, an object with extension R data will be saved on your downloads. And you can always just uh, go and close the application and come back uh, to upload this object and continue where you stopped. Um, if you have any further questions about this module, don't hesitate to go to home uh, about our section, contact that development tab, and send us a message uh, through the support desk. I hope this was useful and um, good luck with your analysis.